Hey guys, in a previous video, I showed you that if we have this second order homogeneous differential equation just here, then x equals e to the lambda t is a solution to this equation if and only if lambda is equal to this expression just here. And this is where we can go three separate ways. We can go one way where zeta, or our dampening ratio, is less than one. We can evaluate when zeta is greater than one. And we can also evaluate zeta when zeta equals to one. And this particular video, we'll be talking about what happens when zeta is exactly equal to one. So from now on, I'll be referring to everything in terms of when zeta is equal to one, our dampening ratio. So the first thing to note is that our roots of lambda is change. Um, for starters, we don't actually deal with the plural anymore. I mean, we're not dealing with roots, uh, we're dealing with just a root, because when zeta is equal to 1, this square root sign will turn to 0, which means that lambda, our root, is just going to evaluate into minus zeta omega n, which, as you can imagine, is just going to turn into minus omega n in the case where zeta is 1. So our root is just minus omega n which means that what we've essentially shown is x is equal to e to the minus omega n t is a solution to this equation just here. We've shown that. Now, at the moment, we, we know this is a solution, but we seek to find out whether there's another solution. At the moment, we've got one unique solution, but we've got a sneaking suspicion that there might be another. So let's, let me ask you an interesting question, just to get you a little bit curious about this. Is, is x equal to t times e to the minus omega and t a solution? We don't know. I'm just asking you, is it? Spoiler alert, it actually is, but we need to prove it. And to prove it, what we need to do is we need to substitute this into here and see, and see if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And if it does, then it is a solution. So let's evaluate this. We know that um, x dot is going to be equal to, based off this definition of, of what x is, it's going to be, using the product rule, we can say this is going to be 1 times e to the minus omega nt plus t times minus omega n times e to the minus omega nt. That's x dot, right? This is your velocity. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. I'm going to group the omega nt's back together. And what we're left with is 1 minus um, omega nt. Cool. For, unfortunately, that's not enough. We also need to find the double derivative. So let's do the double derivative. Let's differentiate this thing again. And what are we left with? Well, let's, differ let's use the product rule again. Let's differentiate this beast first. It's going to be minus omega n times e to the minus omega nt times by this beast unchanged, 1 minus omega nt. Then let's leave this guy the way it was before, e to the minus omega nt, and differentiate this beast, which is just going to turn into minus omega n. OK. So I have got a sneaking suspicion this can be simplified once we group the e to the minus omega nt's out and what are we left with? It'll be um, minus omega n here and this is minus omega n so we can group those to make minus 2 omega n and the omega n's um, accumulate here or multiply here and we're left with plus omega n squared t. Okay so we've got x, we've got x dot, we've got x double dot now we're ready to see whether these equations satisfy the equation x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n squared x is equal to 0, which in this context is going to be x double dot plus 2 omega n, notice the zeta disappears, x dot plus omega n squared x is going to be equal to 0. So we need to see whether all of these things, when plugged into here, equals to 0, and that will prove that this is a solution. So to do this, let me just zoom out a little bit and shuffle this thing across, and let's get involved in plugging these things in. Well, first of all, we notice when we plug in our first term, x double dot, we're going to be left with e to the minus omega nt. Actually, let me say that this is just the left-hand side of our equation. The left-hand side of our equation is going to be equal to x double dot, which is e to the minus omega nt times by minus 2 omega n plus omega n squared t. 
Now let's deal with this term just here, which is going to be um, plus 2 omega n times by e to the minus omega nt times by 1 minus omega nt. And now let's deal with this final term out here, which I'll draw in orange, which is plus omega n squared times by x, which is just here, which is going to be uh, t e to the minus omega n t. Now if the left hand side is, is equal to zero, then we know this is a solution. So let's continue going with this and see if we can simplify this out a little bit more. Let's begin by grouping the e to the minus omega n t's out, and what are we left with? It'll be minus 2 omega n plus omega n t squared t plus uh, 2 omega n, let's see that once that's distributed, minus 2 omega n squared t plus, plus omega n squared t, right? That's what this beast is equal to. And let's see if there's any mass cancellation. I suspect there will be, otherwise I've made a mistake. And this will be e to the minus omega nt times by, well, let's see, what cancels off here? Well, we got a minus 2 omega n here and a plus 2 omega n here. That cancels off. And let's see, we've got a plus omega n squared t here, a plus omega n squared t here, and a minus 2 here. So these will cancel off too, leaving us with a beautiful resounding zero. And when we plug that into our calculator, any calculator will be left with zero. I hope you understand that. Okay, cool. Which basically means that this is equal to your right-hand side, which means then, let me zoom out a little bit more, which means then, let me zoom back in over here, it means that this is in fact a solution. Replace this question mark with an exclamation mark. This is a solution. We've proven it's a solution. So let me summarize our findings below. We have shown that x equals e to the minus omega nt is a solution. That's from the start of this video. And we've also just shown that x equals e to the, sorry, t times e to the minus omega nt is also a solution. In the case where zeta is equal to 1. So consequently, we can use super, the superposition theorem now to say that a more generalized equation, um, in fact a unique equation, is going to be x is equal to a times e to the minus omega nt plus b times t e to the minus omega nt. This is our generalized solution just here. And in fact, we can simplify this out a little bit more. If you like, we can group the e's out and we can say x is equal to e to the minus omega nt times by a plus bt. This is our final solution. This is our final solution. And um, this is only for the case where zeta is equal to 1, which is called critically, critically damped. This is for critically damped motion. Um, now, a few of you may be wondering why it was, why we chose the values that we did, why we just guessed whether this was a solution. It seems quite arbitrary, and in a way, it kind of is. But if you're not fully satisfied with why we guessed and checked this, or why this is the only solution, I recommend you hit this link up just here.